Hello everyone, it's me Russell with Rusty Bull Whips here, and the next whip review is of the Magnoli Clothiers Deluxe Cowhide Bull Whip. So this is a whip that I've never seen reviewed on YouTube thoroughly. There's only one review other than, there's only one other review on YouTube, and um, it's just a person cracking the whip. And they talk about it a little bit, but they don't really show it in depth too much. So I'm going to give this one a fair proper review from a um, customer standpoint or a, yeah a customer standpoint so let's just get straight into it so one thing right off the bat this whip is not real it's crafted the sort of sort of similar to how real whips are and it does crack it performs but it's really more of a costume cosplay piece rather than an actual fully well crafted functioning whip so I might be a little harsh in this review just because of that, but it's, I'll try to give it my best shot. So Magnoli Clothiers is a company in New Zealand that specializes in cosplay props and cosplay clothes. And they sort of, um, they tend to charge a little bit much for their products, but the whip is actually very decently priced. And as I said, this is the deluxe version. They also have a, a cheaper version with just a rope core inside, but we're going to review the deluxe version. So something that sets the deluxe version apart from the just the normal version is that it, it has more layers of leather plaited over it. It has, um, I think, two bellies and two bolsters of cowhide and a wire core to give it somewhat some tension, but that doesn't really help too much when you crack it. it just It's a very lightweight whip. Um, it's a little too light and still needs a little bit more tension and weight because when I went out to crack this whip it was very difficult. It wasn't it wasn't too difficult but it was a little bit of a struggle. I kind of had to force some of the cracks a little bit just to come out because it's just so light and there's barely any weight at all. But let's just talk about appearance. Let's get into the appearance. So let's start with the handle. We have a wrist loop, a braided six-strand wrist loop. This follows more of the Indiana Jones specs. All the whips that they have on their site follow the Indiana Jones bull whip design. They're in their adventure category. So the wrist loop is accurate. This is meant to look accurate for the money. This is a very budget-friendly whip, so it's meant to look somewhat screen accurate. So the heel knot, we have the 7x6 with the wide strands overlapping each other. Very indicative of an Indiana Jones bullwhip, at least from the first three films. It's a little too triangular. I, I wish that they made it a little rounder um, around the heel. Here's the handle. We have the diamond braids. Um, they look good for the most part. Uh, I can tell that these are a little fatter than, well, per se, like a kangaroo hide. Whip these strands are a lot fatter, so the diamonds are going to be, well, a lot fatter. Uh, as you can see, there are some gaps and there are some little abrasions here on the handle. And the cowhide just kind of tends to stick up a little bit, which um, isn't really that good because it makes the, the handle feel very rough and very coarse. Uh, we have a transition knot. Now, the transition knot is actually quite good. It's very flush. Um... It's braided similarly to the first three films. It's just tied on very nicely and then it goes into the transition zone. The transition zone isn't bad. It's still kind of, um, it kind of droops a little bit though when you hold it up. It's a little stiff here, a little too stiff, which can play into a factor when you crack it. It might be, the crack might come out a little quieter or it's gonna be harder to crack it. I forgot to mention one more thing. This is a 12 plat braided whip, so it does follow the, the screen accurate Indiana Jones whips, but I would suggest um, putting some leather wax on a good amount of times just so you can keep this thing supple because the leather is very dry on this and it's very, very squishy. Uh, the taper is not that good, honestly. I'm not trying to talk trash about the, the company, but uh, I, I kind of wish the taper was a little bit better here. It's a little... A little too fat for the most part. It stays fat and then it doesn't taper until maybe here. And even after that, it barely has a decent 
a good enough taper to be loud. So this whip is not going to be very loud. You can get a decent sound out of it, but it's really not going to be anywhere close to a real functioning kangaroo whip or a good quality cowhide whip. Uh, we have a slight, we have the small taper. This is the smallest taper. It's still not that small. Uh, we have the fall hitch. The fall hitch is, it's all right. I mean, it's a little too bulky in my opinion. It might create a little bit of drag. And the fall, well, this is one of my own paracord falls. I had to switch out the fall because it was way too light. Uh, here's the original fall that it came with. As you can see, the leather is just very cheap. It's very like, it's paper thin. It's like very dry, which is something that I'm not really a fan of. And it's just way too light. When I was out cracking this whip yesterday, it was just, it was kind of difficult to crack. I mean, like the tension, it, it lacked a lot of tension and a lot of weight. Like if they put more shot loading in here, and if they tapered it a little better, this probably would have been a would be a decent functional whip. This just functions just enough so you can learn. But overall, appearance-wise, um, it's really not bad. It does follow the Indiana Jones specs quite well for a basic budget Indiana Jones whip. This is a very good costume piece. I wouldn't suggest it for those that are trying to get a good budget whip for the money because this really is not one that I would recommend. And I've read reviews on the site that they've broken it or it's broken within a few months because maybe just of how it's constructed. It's not meant to be cracked every day or normally on regular occasions just for cosplay pieces or we're just doing light stone work. So that was the main reason that I bought this whip. I wanted a leather indie whip for a decent price that I could just beat up and not have to worry about beating up my kangaroo hide whips because those are expensive. But yeah, it's it's just an alright, it's a decent cosplay whip as I'm going to keep saying this, it's a good costume whip, good for your indie cosplays, but I suggest getting it for your first whip. If you really want to get it, go ahead, but I'd suggest stay away from this one and get a nylon whip. Because this one, you're going to be forming bad habits. I can already tell. I could already tell when I went out to practice with this that this was very loose and it wasn't... This wasn't the same as a normal... As a normal whip. So, it's not bad. Not bad. So, I'm going to go... Let's go crack it.